in this video I'm gonna show you how to reach max level in Skyrim in under 10 hours. From a time leveling perspective we can divide leveling in Skyrim under three simple categories. First we have the fast leveling skills, these can be leveled instantaneously. They are skills that take between one second and one minute to max out. In this category we have all the defensive skill that include block, heavy and light armor plus the smithing skill. From the magical tree we have alteration and destruction. Yes. You heard that right, destruction. And from the thief tree we have speech and alchemy. Don't believe me? Just wait and see. Second category to talk about are skills that take moderate time to increase. These include conjuration, illusion and enchanting from the magical tree. None of the combat skills and pickpocket and sneak from the thief tree. These skills take up to an hour to max out, with the odd one out being enchantment that could take more than an hour depending on your mashing button skills. Last category are skills that take a lifetime to max out. These were skills designed to max during the whole playthrough and this really shows. Here we have the last magic skill of restoration. We have one and two handed combat and archery and lock picking in the thief tree. During the playthrough we will need to raise about 600,000 septims to train these skills. But don't exit the video though, while speaking about each skill we included the fastest way to level that skill up without training. The game was played on the PlayStation 5 and it was the anniversary edition. Only mod used was the fast alternative start. Now let's get into the video. First path towards greatness was creating the character. If you want a head start on leveling, the best way to go is Kajit, as it gives you a small buff in their thief skills. We'll need the extra boost in sneak to max our first skills. Alternatively, if you don't like playing as a cat, you'll just need to get level 20 in sneak and invest one or two points in that tree. This can be easily done with a sleeping bear while escaping Helgen or sneaking around the skeletons in the Hall of the Dead in Whiterun. With the lovely character created, we start our journey in Riverwood. This next part will involve a little bit of preparation for our journey. If you are just interested in the tactics we used for leveling, jump to that timestamp here. First thing was to go and find a standing stone near the village and activate the warrior stone. With this done we return to Riverwood and take all that the blacksmith Alvor has to give. We need to raise 50 gold to kickstart our run so we go and sell most of our provisions. With the money secured and in our pocket we ran to the city of Whiterun. Here we pay the carriage driver to take us to Dawnstar. This is the best place to find a good merchant chest. For those of you that do not know this term, a merchant chest is where merchants around Skyrim store their goods. The goods are not actually in their inventory, but instead being stored in chests just outside the game world bounds. However, there are some places where you can access some of these chests. So we arrive at Dawnstar and make our way just to the mine outside the city. Here if you crouch next to the rock, on the left side of the mine entrance and wiggle around you will be greeted by the prompt to open. Doing this will open the inventory of one of the Kajit caravan merchants traveling around the world. We take everything of value out of it plus the 750 septims that he had for bargaining. With this done we go to the white hall in the village and steal the three giant toes from the mage's quarters. We'll need them a bit later. We continue our journey of finding expropriated giant limbs and travel to mortal alchemist shop for one and four in Windhelm, two in Calixtos museum and two in the palace of the kings. With the items in hand next on the list is to get a bodyguard. There is no time to think of combat in the early game so we need a strong character to do all the fighting for us. So we go and find Mercurio in the inn in Riften and for the small fee of 500 gold he joined our journey and defended us if something bad came to pass. Having a bodyguard with us we return to Windhelm and travel just south to the Mammoth Cemetery part of the map. Fun fact, in this area you can fight two friendly giants, one walking about and one mourning his mammoth friend and some nudist hunters taking a bath in the thermal waters. We came here as we are interested in the flora of the region. This is the only place in Skyrim where a special plant grows. We need creep clusters and lots of them. So we just wander in this part of the area until we fill our backpack with around 30 specimens of the plant. Before leaving the region we use Mercurius powers to take down the giants here and look their toes. This took a while. Adventuring around we managed to raise our first level. One down, 79 to go. 
This first skill point we earn, we put in sneak. This is very important and will allow us to execute our first trick. With the point invested, next step is to acquire about 3000 gold and start our leveling process. This is an easy task. We return to Dawnstar, wait for a few days and then loot the merchant chest again. Easy money, how they say. Having some money and items in our inventory, we hurry to Riften, where we will sell all the unnecessary loot and then join the Thieves Guild. This is where the magic will begin. Having joined the Thieves Guild, it is time to apply their tenets and do some stealing. What you need to do is to sit behind this crate right here behind Vex and train your lockpicking skill. After you train it, steal the money back. Simple as that. This is where one point in sneak comes in handy, as without it, you couldn't get hidden. With this trick alone, we were able to reach lockpicking skill 76 and pickpocket to level 100. So basically, the fastest way to level up your pickpocketing is to pay a trainer and then steal the money back. With the thief stone activated, this should not take more than 10 minutes to pull off. One skill down, 17 more to go. With some health under our belt gained from leveling, we leave the den of thieves and execute some more preparation. For our next leveling scheme, we need to do some more hunting. We already have some giant toes, but we need more. We open the map and starting from White Run, we visit every giant camp on the map and exterminate their species from Skyrim. Giant toes check, creep cluster checked. All we need is to find some wheat. This is an easy task as it can be found on the farms just outside the big cities. We take some from White Run and the remaining quantity required from the farms outside Windhelm. After all the ingredients have been acquired, we fast travel to Solitude to the clothing shop and purchase for ourselves an alchemy boosting item and a magica one. We will need it for later. And also add to our shopping list some unenchanted apparel. All the requirements have been met, so we go activate the Thief Stone and return to Riften. We'll do the training here as we will use Nirwin for archery training in between levels. Here we invest 2 points in alchemy and 2 in enchantment after we get that skill to level 20. We go to Mistville Keep, disenchant the alchemy item and apply that enchantment to our apparel. You can put it in headwear, rings, amulets and gloves. These items are all that we need for the next trick. So we go next to the alchemy shop and dump all other apparel in the barrel nearby. We enter the shop, equip the alchemy items and engage with the alchemy bench. Alchemy in this game raises proportionally with the value of the potion created. So the more expensive the potion, the more you level up the skill. Having said that, we are in luck, as the ingredients we gathered are used to create one of the most expensive potions in the game. So we do that until we reach level 40 alchemy. Every time we level up, we return to Nirwin and train our archery skill too, stealing the money afterwards. At the alchemy shop, we start to sell the potion created using the aggro reload technique. This feature of the game renews the item of merchants every time you aggro them and reload the game. This trick helps us gain some money. Remember, we need around 600,000 septims for training in this playthrough. Every time we sell a potion, we are also looking for these ingredients. They will help us in the next stage of our endeavor. Now this is the resto glitch. How it works? In essence, boosts given by items are considered restoration effects. So if you brew a restoration potion and drink it, the next time you'll put the items on, their boosting effects will increase. But what if you have items that boost your alchemy? What happens then? You drink the potion, put the items on and they will boost your alchemy more than usual. You take advantage and brew another restoration potion. This potion will be stronger than the one before and will boost your items more. Hence, the next potion will be stronger. Hence more boosting, you get the idea. Do this more than 10 times and you will reach the point where each potion is more expensive than all the loot in Skyrim and their boosting powers go into the order of millions of points. Funny trick, if you drink a resto potion then equip an enchanted item, the boosted effect of the item will remain long after the effect of the potion expires. It will remain active until you unequip the item. We take advantage of this and keep our alchemy boosting effects just in the order of thousands so that the potions we brew don't take us to level 100 in one second. We do this so that we can train archery in the meanwhile and not waste any training points. To summarize, after you get to level 40 in alchemy, the rest of glitch can be performed and can raise your alchemy to 100 in less than 5 minutes. With alchemy to 100 and archery to 78, 
we move to white run and continue our training, that being in two handed. Best trainer out there is Vilkas from the Fighters Guild, so we join the bunch. It is time to get the money we need for the rest of the playthrough. We go to Arcadia's and buy all the ingredients from the shop several times over. Being that the potions we brew are so expensive, every time we sell one, speech increases with tens of levels. We just repeat the steps, training two handed every time we have the chance. At speech level 100, we invest in that tree, making all traders have more money. Using the maxed experimenter skill, we eat one of each ingredients to find out their effects and then brew hundreds of potions. Money will not be an issue going forward. Alchemy 100 and speech 100. Next step is to become immortal and unlock ultimate magicka powers. For this we need the respective enchantments, some rings and amulets and some fortify enchanting potions. Remember, our potion boosts for thousands of points. We brew the potions, go to the alchemy table and enchant a ring and an amulet with health and magicka. We take this opportunity to also enchant a ring with fortify smithing, we'll need it for the next part. With unlimited mana points, we buy muffle and soul trap from the mage, learn the spell and spam muffle as we continue our journey. This will help raise illusion while we occupy ourselves with the other skills. Smithing is next on our list. Smithing in Skyrim increased based on the value of the weapon you obtain. So if you sharpen a weapon and make it legendary, if your skill is high enough, you can get from level 15 to 100 with only one stroke of the hammer. However, to maximize our training points, we make it in such a way that every sharpening raises 10 to 20 smithing levels. Even like this, after 4 sharpenings, we get to level 100. With this we get as a side effect a magnificent blade that can one-shot anybody even on legendary difficulty. For all previous skills, 20% faster increase from the standing stone was enough, but going forward we need another ace in our sleeves. We need to get some more boosting in EXP gained. For this we need an ancient artifact, one of Dwemer origin. So off to Markart we go. Here we acquire a horse and proceed to this ruin right here. I won't even try to say its name. We took the horse for its really special abilities, that being that in this game horses are like Spider-Man and you can actually climb 90 degrees angles. At this ruin we start the Lost for the Ancients questline that has the special reward of the ethereal crown. This item has an enchantment of keeping the last active effect of a standing stone. We complete this mission traveling all around the map and collecting the shards. In the final part we defeat the automaton for this piece of jewelry. With this in hand we enchant it with the lover stone in the vicinity of Markart. And just like that from now on EXP gain raises to 30 35%. Having raised our level in illusion by spamming muffle all this time, we take the opportunity and train lockpicking until 90. Next on the table is conjuration. We travel next to the beginning standing stones, activate the mage stone and just soul trap the horse until we get to level 100. Simple as that. We also trained archery and two-handed to 90 in the meantime. Alteration is up next. For this we need to use the telekinesis spell that can be found at the Redwater Den. So we fast travel to Riften and then walk to our destination while spamming muffle. Doing this we get to Illusion 100. At the Redwater Den we enter the skuma infested bar and find the spell in question on the body in a cage. By mistake we killed our old friend Mercurio but I guess he outlived his usefulness at this point. We read the book and travel to Whiterun. Now prepare for this doozy. To max Alteration. Just lift an object in the air and then fast travel to another location while doing so. The distance you choose to travel will be proportional to the level you gain. If you go from Riften to Markart, you will get to level 100 in one go. However, we chose the distance moderately so we can train our one-handed skill in the meanwhile at the companion's hall. Same tactics are used for destruction. In the anniversary edition of the game you can find unbounded storms at Hopefall's cave. You just 
have to equip trigger it and travel from location to location to level up destruction. Simple as that. 1 minute level 100 destruction. At this point we have 90 in these skills and 75 in one hand. Next slow skill to train is restoration. That you can train in white run from Danica Pur Spring at the temple of Kinaret. However, we need to finish her quest first, so that is what we do. At this point we have unlocked the last trainer. The next skill to max out is enchantment. Just be sure to have the mage stone and the lover stone effect on and possess the sneaking enchantment. For this no out of ordinary tactic was found. Just craft as many hide bracers as you can and enchant the hell out of them. You should have sufficient soul gems from the time selling potions at the beginning of the run. 100 enchantment at this mark. To finish lockpicking at last, we craft a fortify sneaking and a fortify lockpicking item and travel first to Windhelm to break all the master doors in the city, then to Markart to the Dwemer Museum. Having done this, we get to level 95. This is enough as the last skills we can increase by reading the books from the screen. All the while we train our restoration. We calculate it in such a way as from the level we have left we can reach restoration 90 only by training. With this done, it is time to prepare for our next trick. We need to go to Arcadia, prepare 6 paralysis potions and then craft a Daedric dagger. This is a prerequisite to raise sneak to 100 in less than 10 minutes. This is a new technique never seen before. For this technique we need a companion. My favorite one in the game is Faendal the Wood Elf. Check the last video out. So we travel to Riverwood, give the letter to Camilla and help Faendal with his love problem and then take him as our companion. With this done, just travel to his house, place the paralysis paralysis potion on your dagger, sneak and then just hit the poor little elf for 10 minutes to max the sneak tree. Simple as that. Next ones are even simpler. Next on the list are the defensive skills. For this just give Faendal one of your legendary swords and engage with him in combat. 5 hits and you'll max out all of them provided you have both light and heavy armor equipped plus one shield. Nice going with this Bethesda. It just works. At this point we are almost done. All skills increased except the resto, one and two handed and archery. To max the fastest way the skills that remain, we have to become the fabled dragonborn at last and learn some words of power. So we kill the dragon at the watchtower, we kill three more dragons in order to absorb their souls and learn elemental fury, found here, here and here. This will make our attacks go like crazy. We craft some Daedric weaponry and employ Genasa from Whiterun. We donate to her an invincible enchanted armor and travel to somewhere more secluded. And then we just hit her, hit her and then just heal her. Just repeat that until you max your combat skills and reach level 95 restoration. For the last of the 5 levels in healing we read the books listed on the screen. We have done it boys, just one more skill and one hour to spare. Archery is the last skill not yet maxed. So we could have just shot at Shanessa like we did earlier, but there is a hidden quest that will make us reach level 100 faster. South of Falkrit there is a small shack called Angis Shack. Here an NPC will give you a quest that can raise your archery skills in less than 5 minutes. We do that and for the last part we read the remaining books. Stop right there criminal scum! If you like this video see you in the next one.